Welcome back guys. If you've been following our last few episodes, then you know that we are redesigning our V-Burst. After hours of planning around various tricky angles and curves, walls are going up, but we decided to go a different route. Welcome to Sailing Gypsy. Two years ago, we knew nothing about sailing, but took off from Canada with an urge for adventure. I'm Steph, this is Travis, and this is our home, Gypsy. We moved quickly and in a short time have made it down south and even crossed an ocean, but we still have a whole lot more of the world to see and join our life on the water. Catching you up on the progress we've made so far, we've got the foam insulation mapped out for the walls and have cut the wood for the bed. It's now also serving as a nice little workstation for the woodwork that's happening up front. Got a couple walls up. Uh, this guy here. This panel over here, just gotta close this in. Not too shabby. All we need to do is put the door on. This back wall, which is gonna be quite hard because I've gotta go up in here, down, and then the curve of the hall. The wall is gonna be quite tricky. I'll show you how I've been mapping the wall so far. All I've been doing is using cardboard squaring off angles the best I can, and then making a template out of the cardboard to then map onto the plywood. It was really exciting. I had a bunch of different ideas for the door. I think our final one is how I built it now, or it's going to be built. It's gonna be a hidden door. I had this nice piece of hardwood from the cabinet before, and it had this nice edge on it. I'll just clean this up. If I do it right, it should look something like this. And I'm going to have a push close, so you're going to push it and it's op it'll open, and then you open it up. Should be pretty cool. But I'll show you how I've mapped out the walls so far with my angles. So what I'm going to do is build this wall the best I can out of cardboard and get it as close to the corners and the round bits as I can. And I use a little wheel with a, a hole through it and a pen, and then I just trace down the edges and that should give me a shape to snug in to the wall. And then I'll fine tune with the cardboard and then take it to wood. This one's giving me quite difficulties. There's a lot of curves, a lot of angles. I fine tuned to the top edge with another piece. I squared it off. I'm confident in how this curve looks, the top edge. I'm still not 100% confident on cutting the whole piece out of the big one. So just a sheet, a small sheet, 20 inches. It's my width squared. I'm gonna jigsaw this out. See how it fits up there, matching the wall. And if I'm confident with that top edge, I'll just screw it into place and work on the hull curve and then the bottom. So here's my mock-up piece. I'm gonna give it a 99%. I'm gonna sand some edges to see if I can get it really tucked up in there. Well, here goes nothing. Let's hope I cut it right. Well, let's hope I measured it right. Not too bad. Got 
the inside matching. Installed the wall back there. This guy. Mapped out. Ended up ripping this whole shelf out and insulating behind here as well. Final touch is put the door on. We're just going to be painting all of the backsides of everything here, just to seal in the wood. Okay, so we have the walls all painted. It's underneath this big map that you see here. We initially said that we were going to be making it look as unison with the rest of the boat as possible, trying to keep it matchy-matchy, but we're going a different route because it didn't work out that way. Uh, we couldn't find the right stain to match our 30 plus year old wood that was in there. We bought a couple of them, tried it out, just didn't work. Plus the wood that we got just wasn't the best for staining and varnishing. So we decided to go a totally different route. We're gonna be overlaying this gorgeous map on top of the walls where our storage is gonna be. And we're gonna do an epoxy finish on it. Pretty much fits the entire wall. We have a couple cutoffs that we're gonna just have to try to fit, but this map is huge. And the color scheme I think is gonna look really good because it has that reddish look that's gonna match our wood, as well as a little bit more, um, I guess these are pink, pink tones which I think will just accent it really well. We're super excited for this because before we left Toronto, we initially had a plan on making our table that was in the saloon a map. But we left in such a hurry, we kind of just left the tabletop kind of half prepped, I guess. And obviously, you know, we don't have a table. So we're gonna get to bring our map dream to life. And this is gonna work out so nice because this is even bigger than what the table was gonna be. Everything's legible, we get a good idea of where every place is that we want to visit. So what I did was mapped it out uh, <laughs> map on the four pieces of wood that's behind here. Because we have an outside corner, I can make a relief cut there and then match two panels to two panels up because those are the ones that are connecting. The outside corner, I can at least fudge it a little bit if I had to, to these two. So that's what I'm going to do. I think I've got it in the right spot. I'm just going to cut it down the middle. Hope this isn't like the bed where I cut it and screw it up. <laughs> Monumental fail. Monumental fail. We're testing the map on this spare piece of wood with three different types of adhesive. We have wood glue, contact adhesive, and spray adhesive. So far, wood glue's out. We don't want the corners to lift. So wood glue, it's out. It doesn't have the initial contact to stick the corners down. This stuff, not too bad to apply with a paintbrush. And it seemed to have the initial contact. And I even had the edges folded up a little bit heavier just to see if they would instantly stick. The spray, um, easiest to apply because you just spray it and lay it out. So I'm just checking the corners. It's lifting even there. Yeah, it's lifting. So this might be the best. It's the smelliest. Oh, it's, yeah, it's harsh chemicals. Well, I decided to go with the spray adhesive. The tests came out pretty good between the contact adhesive and the spray adhesive so I'm going to go with this guy instead because the working time is a little bit longer than the contact adhesive and on a big area like this I need a little bit more working time. So it's kind of just like rolling on a sticker. I'll complete one half and then do the other half. So as you can tell I still left the tape halfway so I can peel up half of it. I'll just roll it back apply the adhesive and then you're going to roll it on just like a sticker. You don't want to just slap it down in case you get any bubbles or wrinkles in it. And that's all you got to do. Pretty straightforward. And then once that's all nice and secure, you know you can take the tape off the other side, roll that side up and then do the exact same thing.
We are in our fancy workshop. <laughs> AKA the bathroom. We needed the heat here just to make sure that we had the right temperatures for the epoxy, uh, to work with the epoxy. Also, we needed to have a level surface to work to lay the wood on. Because uh, on a boat, obviously, even though we're docked, there could be slight sway and movement. So we want to just be as level as we can and we have the space. So making use of it. Use these as feet and the screws as adjustments to get the board as level as we can. I also have a big metal straight edge that I can see it. The entire thing is leveled across, and then I got a level as well. So the key thing is just trying to get this as level as possible because what it does is it kind of just sits out and then flows over to get a nice, even, glassy looking layer. So if it's not level, it'll pool the one area more than the other. And then you could potentially get it's called pulling away from the edges, which then doesn't quite um, cover it. Cover it properly. So I'm a little worried for that. Okay, we're ready to mix the epoxy. This is the kind we're using here. The ratio is gonna be two to one. We're gonna be separating the two into two different cups and then pouring it into this pitcher. Well, you get your mixtures right. In case you add too much, you can push a little bit back. stands it looks like it's pretty good so as long as nothing changes throughout the next 16 hours I think this should come out really cool it's like look at this black like look how glassy that is yeah it's a mirror there's like a piece of glass laid over top of it which is really sweet so for a wall and a boat I think it'd be really cool that's kind of why we we thought of this idea or for a keychain. Or she makes keychains. With our pink shells from Barbuda and some leaves, local leaves and sparkles. Yeah, she went off on her own little epoxy crafts. <laughs> this is, oh, this looks good. Not to jinx it yet because we got a couple more pieces to do, but I think me sealing the corners with the glue that I did, uh, it looked like it worked. I only see a little tiny section of seepage, which is like right, right there. You can see it's slightly darker. Now it's just a matter of giving the epoxy time to cure and keeping our fingers crossed that it turns out just how we're hoping it will. Thanks for joining us and hit that subscribe button because next week we'll be putting it all together and showing you how our remodel all turns out.